the first game of the NCAA tournament. Boom. Here we go. And here's a preview for it. We have Howard Wagner kicking off the play in game. Brian Ralph, he checks CBB, is with me to break this all down. Uh, the number one thing that jumps out to me in this game, Seth Towns, once a John Beeline recruit, is still playing college basketball. This is now his fourth school, but he made his collegiate debut in 2017, Brian. 2017. It's 2024. He was- it's absurd. He's part of the Lonzo, he's part of the Lonzo Ball, uh, De'Aaron Fox High School class. How, I don't. I mean, I know how it's possible, <laughs> but that's just such an absurd thing to say out loud. Um, uh, look, I'm not going to pretend that I know these teams like the back of my hand. I think I've seen both of these teams play once this season. I have done my best to study up analytically, but this is why we bring the experts on the show to help us break down matchups like this. Wagner, Howard, what is the first thing that jumps out to you for this game? First thing that jumps out to me, one is the second straight tournament that Howard is in. I know there's been plenty of roster turnover for last year's team, but just this program being back here, mentioned the experience of Towns, Kenny Blakeney in his second go around in the tournament. That's got to pay dividends. And Wagner, too, wasn't supposed to be here. Like they went through the NEC tournament with seven healthy guys and ended up winning. Like it was, it was a miraculous run. They went from 13 and 15 overall, they finished seven and nine in league play during the regular season and then ripped off three straight wins. Uh, and none of them were, were blowouts, but they were all slower, methodical um, slug fest, which they kind of had to be given, given their lack of depth when you only have seven healthy guys. Um, I, I think Howard is the better team on paper per se. Towns is obviously a major talent, but Dockery and Harris for them uh, also average over 13 and a half points per game. Like that, that trio for this level of basketball is very, very good. They're a smaller team. Like Towns is their biggest guy at at, at six, nine. That's obviously plenty of size, but they'll, they'll run four essentially guard size players around him. Um, They have enough to, to certainly win this game comfortably. I'm I'm not going to completely count Wagner out considering they, they just won a conference tournament playing a a methodical style of basketball. But given the the depth concerns there, I, I would, lean in favor of Howard here yeah I think all signs on paper point to Howard and uh, we'll do a prediction at the end of this video but just go through a couple things here uh uh, prior to the conference tournament there wasn't much sign that Wagner was going to win three games and uh it's not three days in the Northeast Conference Tournament it was a full week so uh maybe that's part of why they were able to have success especially given the fact that they're low on bodies right now is they were able to get two days of rest in between these games in that conference tournament but um, prior to that, I mean, they lost four of five down the stretch, nothing overly remarkable in conference play. This is one of the worst offenses in the country. Really. The only thing they do well is guard the three point line, the 10th in the country in three point percentage defense. So, uh, that's the one notable thing to circle and they've mm-hmm. got blown out by the, the quote unquote good teams that they've played. Now the selection committee would tell you these teams aren't good. But they went to Seton Hall and to Providence (laughs) and got blown out by both of those Big East teams. Howard, on the other hand, has some things that just jump out profile-wise that are notable to me. Um, They had won four of their last five to end the season, so they were playing their best ball coming Mm -hmm. into the conference tournament. They did win three games in three days in the MEAC conference. They did play some high-profile teams in the non-conference, including Cincinnati and Yale, who are both – uh, like good team Cincinnati 37th on Ken Palm Yale's in the NCAA tournament, the Ivy champs overtime games against both of those schools. I mean, it's rare to yeah. see a team that's in the two seventies on Ken Palm taking top hundred teams to overtime with that said, both of those games were at home for Howard. So I'm sure that played a factor, but it's impressive nonetheless to me. Like I, you don't see that from a team on the 16 line normally, let alone in the play. Right. Yeah. They also went to Georgia tech and lost at Georgia tech by three in the second game of the season. Like this team is, has shown the ceiling for that. And it's because they shoot the three. Well, you mentioned uh, Wagner's three point defense. That's one of the things that Howard does incredibly well, the top 20 nationally in three point shooting. There is a, an interesting contrast of styles mentioned how slow Wagner plays. It's one of the slowest in the country. I think it's the second or third lowest in the country. And they obviously slowed things down with, with fewer health, healthy bodies. Howard's not trying to get out there and run, but they, they, play at a pretty average pace like they're compared to what Wagner wants to do they, they play at a, at a very fast pace but the good three-point defense of Wagner 
Howard has a good three point shooting team. Again, they, they space the floor with smaller guys, with shooters, creators around Seth Towns and Towns is an awesome three point shooter in his own right. That contrast of style should be very interesting. Rebounding is going to play a big role in here. Howard has done a really good job on the offensive glass this season. That's one of the biggest reasons why they had success in MEAC play. And that that one loss you pointed out during this last stretch came at Norfolk State, a very good Norfolk State team coached by a very good coach, Robert Jones. They did beat Norfolk State in the in the conference tournament. They kind of re- got a revenge for that loss. So momentum, the way these guys are playing, obviously everyone is is, is playing pretty well here, but – Wagner was nine and seven, finished 13 and 15 regular season, really stumbled down the stretch month ago, month and a half ago. Howard was nine and 14 finished up here, 18 and 16, two teams uh, for as much as you can be in the NSA tournament for automatic bids trending in opposite directions. Um, and an interesting contrast of styles that make this, I think a little bit more fun than your typical uh, 16 seed first four matchup. Who's the best player on the floor in this game? Seth Towns, I would probably say, but Bryce Harris is going to have something to say about that for Howard. Uh, I think both of those guys have the ability to to take the game over. Uh, Marcus Dockery, too, if, if he's making his shots, he's shot 41.5% from three on the year. He's got 90 made threes uh, in, quick math, 34 games. Not bad, right? Like any of those three guys for Howard that I mentioned are capable of taking a game over and winning it by themselves, or at least giving Howard a big boost by themselves. The margin for error for Howard because of those guys is much greater than I think the margin for air Wagner has. Yeah. I was wondering if you would throw anyone from Wagner in with those top three, because Howard has a pretty good trio at the top. So uh, I think you're where you landed is correct. That's where I would have landed. Just uh, it, to me, all signs point to Howard here. The more we talk through it really like yeah. the, the only path forward for me here, not to just completely write them off. Cause it's a 16, 16 game. Anything could happen. If Wagner's three-point defense is just for real and can somehow Mm -hmm. keep Howard from making a bunch of threes, then yeah, sure. But to me, this is a game where if like Howard hits two threes in the first five minutes of this game, everybody's looking around like, what do we do? And it's over. Like that's the one trick that Wagner has. So I guess we'll find out. Melvin Council's the guy who makes things go for Wagner. He's on the court all the time. He's got the ball in his hands all the time. He's going to be the decision maker, and we we know how much guard play matters in the NCAA tournament. We hear it over and over again every year. We get beaten over the head with it, but it's true. It's true. And if he's playing at his best uh, and some of those Howard guys are a little bit off their game or maybe Council throws them off their game, then Wagner's got a shot. Then Wagner's got a shot, but it's going to take one of Council's best games of the season to do that. Yeah, 100%. All right. Uh, all March long, we are presented by our friends at MyBookie. If you're looking for a sports book, look no further. MyBookie is the spot for you. We have bracket contests up to $25,000 in prizes. We have a special offer, promo code SLEEPERS. You can get a deposit match bonus up to $1,000 for first-time users. The link is in the description of this video. Going off the line that we have at MyBookie, Howard is a three-point favorite in this game. Uh, let's use that line. What would your prediction be? Which side is the side to bet? I would take Howard. I would take Howard. I would expect this game to have some pretty wild swings just because these first four games, particularly between 16 seeds, always seem to do so. But I'll I'll take the top end talent of, of Howard here. Give me the give me the bison by eight. I like Howard by double digits. Uh, we'll see if I'm wrong on this. I would not be surprised if I'm wrong at all. But to me, all signs point to Howard. They got up for their biggest games of the season. Uh, the, uh, to me, if you're Wagner and the only thing you do well is guard the three-point line, the last thing you want to do is see a team that is 19th in the country at three-point shooting. Uh, I think they got a little bit of a bad deal as far as bad deals can go in the play. And either way, I'm sure they're both thrilled to be there. That's Brian Ralph. He checks CBB. I'm Greg Waddell. We'll have a recap up of this game later this week, along with previews and recaps for every single game of the 2024 NCAA tournament. We'll see you next time.